All right, guys. You asked for it, you're going to get it. A video just on our engine run stand. How we made it, what it does, and all that fancy jazz. So, let's start off with simplicity. So, it's basically just a box of rectangular steel tubing that we welded all up. It's way overbuilt, but we built this thing to handle big block Chryslers that we build. You know, we didn't build this thing for little puny engines. I'm not saying that small block Chevys and Fords ain't big and strong and could be nasty. I'm just saying we built this thing way over, way heavier duty than it needed to be. Okay, so that's out of the way. Um, we got big ass casters so that way it can roll real easy. You know, that's effortless. Of course, once you got an engine on here, it's a little bit of a pain of the ass. Right now, it's set up for big block Chrysler and Hemi in specific. These are our Hemi mounts we made. Now, that is overkill. That's all I can say is that is overkill. I welded those on for Dad's Hemi. Uh, you can use a bell housing to mount your engine on the back. We didn't have a spare bell housing, so Dad actually made this work. He took the pattern off a of 727 and cut it out on, uh, eh, it's thicker than eighth inch. It's pretty thick steel probably a quarter inch or something like that and uh, slotted all the holes so that way we got nice fitment all the way around and that'll bolt right on the back that'll mount the starter and all that jazz and then it mounts to these ears which we had a clearance unfortunately for the big ass hemi headers but they're still strong as hell that's that's angle iron you don't get much stronger than that and then we recently we welded on this guard there's a torque converter we just mount to the back of the engine instead of a flywheel. Because at the time we didn't have an extra flywheel, but now we do over there. And, you know, you get little kids coming in and out, dad's grandkids, and you don't want them to get their fingers chopped off or be stupid like most modern people are. And then I wrote that on there and clear coded it. Scott Speed Shop. That's the thing you see at the beginning of every video. Dad and I signed it. Um. You know, we just, you know, it's, it's kind of oversized, but we wanted this to be bigger than the engine itself. That way the engine wasn't hanging out. And we got it, you know, when the engine's on here, you've seen it's up to about, you know, chest height. So that way it's easy to work on. We're not on the ground. We're not reaching way the hell up. So, yeah. And as for a cooling system, you know, we just got some uh, square tubing standing straight up. And then the radiator is actually my satellite's original big block radiator. And we took it out of there because it was kind of, it wasn't up to par for my satellite and it had some leaks. Well, as you can see, we uh, fixed the leak in a rather redneck faction. Or redneck, whatever, you get my point. Anyways, I can't think of my word here. So we just crimped that off that way it wouldn't leak anymore. And this radiator does great for our engines. And we got a menagerie of different hoses and things we use. And then this plate we made, it's a piece of uh, aluminum. Got firing order on it for most engines we do, just to remind us. Uh, this bracket, I can't remember why we had that bracket, just to stabilize it probably. Because when you're running it, you just sit here and flop. But this is where we mount our ballast resistor, our coil a lot of the times. And all that fancy jazz. You know, it's a really simple design. Anybody can make one of these. Originally, this thing was probably an extra couple of feet long. We were originally going to mount transmissions on the back. Well, that was just not going to work. It was just way too big. So we cut it back, and uh, <coughs> that's what you see here. It just needs to mount the engine. So we come over here. This is Dad's actual little. We made this. Um, this is an electrical box of a house, I believe. I can't remember what we got that from, but it's got our tack, oil and water pressure, um, a toggle switch for ignition, and then a push button start. And this is the main kill, you know, you turn that switch and that gives you power to the engine. The toggle switch gives power to the um, ignition system and then your start button. 
and then you operate the throttle by hand. Dad wants to set up a cable system, but and then there's all the wires and hoses and things that go to it. But we can, uh, I can't really do this one handed. But you can flip up this box and work on it inside. It's got fuses, all the fancy stuff to keep it from blowing up. But, you know, that's just, that's what we did. You know, it's a real cheap, simple system. This is just an old SunTech I had laying around. These are some gauges I had left over from the first incarnation of our engine stand. And we just wanted to mount everything nice in one little station. You know, everything we need to do with the engine is right here. You know, if you need to kill the power instantaneously, you just flip that, take the key out. You don't have to, but... Or you can just, you know... Toggle switch kills all the power. And then that bracket, you know, that's that whole piece. It just mounts right here on the back of the in engine stand right here. And <coughs> I think it goes right there. But yeah, and this whole thing is modular. We can set it up for any engine. We just make new plates. Like I said, this is set up for Hemis right now. We got 440 front mounts. Um... But, you know, when we get, we're going to put my brother's 3D3 on there, so the only reason why it's still here, otherwise we would have the radiator taken off, this thing would be all put away and out of the way. But, yeah, that's, you know, that's basically the gist of our engine um, stand. You know, you can go buy one of these things, but they're kind of flimsy in my opinion. And ours is way overbuilt for what it needs to be, but really nice. You know, it's, it's so much more satisfying when you can make something yourself. Especially with your family, my dad and my brother, and uh, just see it work. And this has been like the best thing we've had that we made because um, you can just set your engine on there, monitor it, break in a camshaft, check it out, leave it on there, run it. For the longest time, my nail head sat on there, which is way over there. And if I just was having a bad day, I'd come out here, flip the switches, start it right up, and just listen to it. And my video of my nail head running is on YouTube, but right now it's sitting over there in the corner of shame, waiting its turn to get back on the stand. I gotta build the dual quad setup for it. <coughs> and of course there's its headers right there. You see it in some videos. But yeah, I hope I you know I uh, I mean there's not a whole lot I can say about our stand, you know, it's just it is what it is. I mean you look at it and it's pretty easy to make. Um doesn't have to be nearly as big as ours. Doesn't have to be so robust and heavy duty, but that's just the way it is. That's how we like to make things. Way overkill. So that way uh, we don't have any issues. But anyway, that's about all I got for you guys. Um, I hope I answered all questions. You guys wanted to see a video on it. I mean, fucking door. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, you know it's just you know it's something simple um i appreciate all your guys support i hope you enjoyed just this little walk around i didn't mean for this video to be eight minutes long but just wanted to show you everything that has going on with our engine stand oh by the way one last thing that's super crucial fucking wind man that's super crucial for one of these stands to work properly or your engine is that see that some people think these are cigarette ashes, but in reality, that is like engine wizard dust. That's what's left over from when you have an engine wizard, a master of building engines around, which are from my dad. If you don't have these, your shit ain't going to work. So you got to have that stuff laying around everywhere, coating everything, especially you need it in a fresh paint job. And there's a story behind that. But I'm not going to waste your time. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.